Hello, my name is Mike Ryan. The name of the show is Jury Duty and Make a Difference on BNN, the show that should answer all your questions about the one day, one trial jury system. Our guest today is Chief Justice Roberto Ronquillo, Jr. from the Boston Municipal Court. Welcome, Chief. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank, Thank you, you for being on the show. Chief Justice uh, Ronquillo uh, earned a, his bachelor's degree in criminal justice from the University of Texas at El Paso and went, later went on to earn his Juris Doctorate at New England School of Law worked as an assistant district attorney for several years before going into private practice. And in 2001, uh, former Governor Paul Cellucci appointed him to the uh, district court bench before transitioning to the Boston Municipal Court, worked at the East Boston Court and the Dorchester Court. And last year, uh, you were appointed the Chief Justice of the Boston Municipal Court, where you oversee eight courthouses, 30 judges, and 470 employees. Yes, sir. And you also teach occasionally over at New England yes, School of Law. Yes, sir. So, Chief, what is the Boston Municipal Court? Well, I'll tell you, the Boston Municipal Court is, uh, in, in short words, it's the, the municipal courts, the eight courthouses that encompass the city of Boston. Um, Charlestown, Brighton, Dorchester, East Boston, West Roxbury, Roxbury, South Boston, and the Central Division, which is the downtown Boston area. That's the Boston Municipal Court. Uh, we are celebrating our 193rd year um, as a court. Uh, as a court, in 1822, it was uh, officially formed as a police court, and then in uh, 1978, the Boston Municipal Court became one of the seven trial court departments. It was a single court in the downtown Boston area. Eleven judges um, until not 2004, when it expanded from just a central division to the other seven courts, which I. Um, just mentioned the other seven courts within the city of Boston. So the territorial jurisdiction of the BMC is the entire city of Boston. Absolutely. Yes, so sir. wherever wherever you may be uh, charged with a crime or you want to seek a civil case, it's the city of Boston. Yes. And what kind of cases would a jury hear at the BMC? Primarily there would be one of three usually. Uh, a criminal case, and in those cases the maximum sentence per, per charge is probably two and a half years maximum. A civil case which uh, has a maximum limit of damages of $25,000, or a small claims case, they have the right to a jury trial as well. And uh, you guys use juries of six, unlike the Superior Court, correct, that uses juries of 12? That is correct, a jury of six. Uh, normally we impanel seven, sometimes eight, depending on the length and complexity of the case, in case we need the alternates, but usually uh, the, the verdict is rendered by six people from the jury. Now, your court also involves some specialty courts. What, what are those? Yes, uh, specialty courts are uh, court or sessions that we've um, uh, appointed, uh, particular judges were specially trained in a particular field um, to assist because we, we find that many people who come to our court um, have issues beyond the criminal uh, issue. There's mental health, there's substance abuse, um, there, there's some, some uh, issues related to veteran services. So what we've done is we've created certain specialty courts um, and I'll name them briefly. We have the, uh, the Veterans Treatment Court, which is a um, designed for veterans who have issues with mental health or uh, uh, substance abuse or other issues. Yeah. And it's addressed in a, in a, I'll say in a military way, in the fact that they are uh, assigned to a, a, a veteran pe uh, peer that assists them sure. in getting through, uh, you know, whatever conditions the court imposes upon them with an eye towards uh, restoration um, and, and addressing the issue. We have the, the homeless court. Uh, with a combination um, established by Judge Kathy Coffer from the Rex Roxbury Court, uh, with the cooperation of the prosecutors, the district attorney's office, the Committee for Public Counsel Services, which provides the, uh, the, the, the criminal defense. And what, what we have found is that there's many homeless people who are in shelters or otherwise whose services, public services, have been shut off because they're on default. They're on default for low level crimes. So we find that uh, if we can resolve those cases, get them back on services, get them back into the hospital or, or public service, um, or even public housing, that resolves a lot of the issues. Um, and that's held actually the Pine Street Inn sure. uh, with, with cooperation um, between the, the defense bar and, and the uh, prosecution's office, and we resolve that. Those kinds of cases, the, men, the mental health case, mental health court sessions where we address uh, the mental health issues with some of the people who come before us, with, with the night towards getting them towards mental health services. And then we have the drug courts with uh, now the, uh, the opiate epidemic uh, being in the forefront, trying to address those issues because we find that incarceration doesn't solve the issue. So we try to get them the services with, uh, with uh, a, a lot of uh, outside service contributions. And the specialty courts don't involve jury trials, do they, ordinarily? Uh, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. 
in when you guys put a jury together, what's, what's generally how long a jury trial in the BMC lasts? Typically no more than one or two days, uh, rare three days, but, um, and, and the jury will know if it's going to be a, what we consider long trials three days, but one or two days maximum usually. And as a former DA and as a, a, a practitioner, did you do many jury trials? I, I did, and I enjoyed it. Yes, it was, uh, it was great speaking to the jury. What was the longest jury trial you've ever I, I, worked on? Maybe about a week, maybe about five, week. six days, yes. Now, when you come to a court and you're working in that courthouse, do you meet with the jurors first thing in the morning? We do. Um, it, five or eight courts um, in the Boston Municipal Court have jury trials. And uh, it, there is a judge assigned who will go and, gre and greet the jurors, explain to them very briefly what uh, they can expect is going to happen, usually tell them how many cases are pending for that day, and, and just kind of give them a brief synopsis of, of what's going to happen, and uh, they, they, they tend to appreciate that. And also, if they have any general questions, we, we tend sure. those as well. Now, when jurors sit, sitting in the jury pool, they've watched the movie, a judge has welcomed them, What's going on up in either the courtroom or courtrooms, depending on the courthouse? Can you, what is the first call on the list? The first call of this is normally, depending on what court it is, we have anywhere from five to 20, 25 cases scheduled for jury trial that day. Sure. So, um, what happens usually is the cases are being called as swiftly as possible with an eye towards getting the jurors either on the bench or, or release them and trying to see what the status of the cases are. Is there really gonna be a jury trial? Are the witnesses present? Is the evidence here? And is everybody ready for trial? Um, that's number one. Number two is, are the case, are the, is this ca the kind of case that's going to be settled? Have they tried to resolve it? Uh, they may be in the middle of negotiation, so they may say, Judge, you know, it, it may not be a jury trial. Give us five, ten more minutes. We're almost closed. So it's, it's a, it's a, the, the, the first session's opportunity to kind of call through the cases to try to resolve the cases that are not going to be jury trial to get to the ones that are going to be so we could uh, start in panel them as soon as possible. So the jurors shouldn't feel that nothing's going on while they're secluded in the jury oh, no, pool. No. There's business going on in the courtrooms. Absolutely. And, and just so you know that the judges take very, very uh, seriously that the uh, jurors are there. And we make every effort to try to move the case as soon as possible so we could uh, either impound the jury or release them. So yes, there is a lot going on in the courtrooms uh, with an eye towards getting to the, to the cases that are actually going to be used for, uh, at a jury. Chief, do, a, do, a, do the presence of jurors just lead to a, a lot of re resolution of cases without going to trial? Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the presence in the jury is very, very important. There, there may be a case where, for whatever reason, a party may not want to resolve the case and put it on for another day. And if they know that there's not sufficient jurors to impanel the jury, it's an easy way of saying, you know, we, we want a jury trial, give us a date three months down the road, and th thereby extend the case. By the jurors being available, it allows us as a system to say, today's a jury trial day. Today we're ready. As a system, we have the courtroom, we have the judge, we have the jury. Today's your jury trial date. And it, it, um, it expedites the case, it resolves them. Um, many times they end up in, in, in some kind of amicable resolution. What happens if someone pleads guilty? What happens in the courtroom after that, after they've been given that offer, either to go in front of a jury or a judge? What okay. happens then? As soon as they plead guilty, uh, usually the, the, the defendant is, is sentenced right then and there, and the case is resolved for the day. Now, do you have to do you ask the, uh, the defendant a series of questions before you... Oh, absolutely. B before anybody pleads guilty, I, as a judge or the judge uh, sitting in session, will have to uh, be satisfied that the defendant knows that the rights they're giving to, one of the key rights is a right to a jury trial. It's a constitutional right. So we have a series of questions that we ask um, to make sure that, that the defendant, um, the accused, has given up the rights, and um, is doing it voluntarily and willingly. Do you feel um, that some people are slighted that when they go to jury duty, they're not, they, they don't get picked on a trial and they're kind of disappointed? Y yes, I, uh, I've seen ju jurors who've been very uh, relieved by not getting picked on a jury and some who are, who are upset and they can't figure out why. Um, and I, I guess that the best way I can say is one of the beauties of a jury system is that the parties have a right to select, to have a say in who is in the jury system. Not the exclusive say, but um, they have a, a, a voice. And if there is a, a party feels that a juror would, would be prejudicial to, prejudicial to them for some particular reason, they have a right um, to, to exclude them. The, the great thing is that it's both parties. It's fair. So it, it's not a matter of, of, uh, of being slighted but it's a matter of, of doing um, the right thing and giving the best fair trial that we can. When jurors go into the courtroom, and as you know, sometimes they may not get into the jury box or somebody may get in the box and they may be challenged. Should they feel slighted if they're challenged? Uh, again, not at all. Um, there are particular cases, for example, that just, uh, and it comes to mind, uh, based on the profession that you may be challenged. I'm thinking on a criminal case, if the juror is a police officer, for example, 
you know, someone may want to challenge them just based on their profession. But on a civil case, a contract case, a police officer may be, you know, the fact that he's a police officer or she's a police officer will not affect it. They may stay on the jury. So it's case by case, person by person, and it's not necessarily an, uh, a personal thing that, that, that occurs. <laughs> When you sit on a trial, before you start the trial, do you set out any ground rules to the jury, especially to say, stay off of social media, don't be doing yes. research? We, we, we have a, 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 uh, a preliminary instructions that we give the, the, the jurors. We explain to them the importance of what it is to be on jury duty. Um, we tell them, give them like a roadmap of what they expect is going to lie ahead regarding the jury trial, who's going to go first, who's second, what, um, what, the, what, what the role of the lawyers are. What my role as a judge is, and there's actually, and there's as a juror. So um, we instruct them to stay out of uh, social media regarding that case, so that the, the decision, the verdict that they make, is based exclusively on the evidence um, that was taken in that courtroom and not any um, outside influence. What is your role as, when you sit on a jury trial? What's the judge's role? The the judge's role um, is it's pretty much to uh, rule on on motions, rule on on objections, and to instruct the jury on the law. Um, so it's it, it's great because the jury makes a decision. We just uh, keep keep the trial going, um, and it's uh, it's a matter of just listening to the evidence, listening to the objections, and making the rulings. Now, when juries come to jury, they're told if they have a hardship, they'll have an opportunity to speak with the judge. Do you need an extraordinary story or a situation that would prevent you from serving on a jury? We we, we try to. Uh, be reasonable with the jurors. If it is, uh, it's a case by case. Sure. There's no black and white line. Mm -hmm. It's a case by case situation. So the judge will hear it. Uh, we try not to overburden the people. We understand they're taking time, you know, from their busy lives to be here. So we try to be as understanding as we can. On the other hand, we also need a sufficient number of jurors to be able to impanel the, the jury cases that are for that day. So we try to be uh, understanding as well. If you had any trouble with difficult jurors, people who really weren't too thrilled about serving jury. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story. Was, there was a, uh, I was impounding a jury one day and there was a, a young woman who, in the questionnaire where it says, can you be fair, she wrote, uh, the system doesn't work, but didn't use the word doesn't work. She used a bad word. She used a bad word. Right. And I looked at it, but didn't tell me why she couldn't be fair. So I pulled her up with the lawyers on either side and I asked her and I said, tell me about this. I understand you, know, you don't care for this system. What does that mean? And she says, well, Judge, you know, uh, uh, the guilty go sometimes go free, the innocent go to jail, and it's just it's just not fair. And I said, oh, okay, I, I respect your opinion. So tell me, uh, do you think you can be fair? Oh no, yeah, I think I'm fair. It, it was a criminal case, and I said, do you think the defendant is guilty or, or, or right now? She says, no, no, I haven't heard anything, so I don't think he's guilty. And I said, so you think you're a fair person? And 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 right now, are you influenced either way by this side? She goes, no. I said, you'd be great on the jury. So she looked at me, stunned, and I said, it'll be fine. I said, I'm going to ask you to sit there. So she sat there, not too happy, but she obliged. After the trial, I talked to the juries. And we don't talk about the, uh, the, the merits of the case. We talk about their experience. And I asked them, I said, tell me about your jury experience. Um, what do you think? What could we do better? Just kind of trying to improve what we do. And some jurors raised their hand. My first time was great. And she didn't raise her hand. But I asked her, I said, young lady, could you, what do you think? And she said, I loved it. It was such a great experience. And she went on to say how it was much different than she expected. And I asked her, I said, so why did you write that back in the questionnaire? And she said, well, you know, we talk and, and, and what you hear on TV, but sure. it's so great because I became a part of it. And she, her, her uh, uh, belief and thought of jury, the jurors here was just completely different once having gone through because she realized exactly how important she was. Have you had other similar situations where jurors may not have been crazy about doing jury, but once they served, their opinion changed? Oh, oh absolutely. I, it's my experience that the jurors, after going through, through the, uh, the process and, and having sat through a trial, recognize how critical it is um, for the system to work. Because you can even tell, even if initially when they don't want to sit, but as the trial's going on, they, they pay attention and they understand um, the seriousness of their obligations. And I appreciate that incredibly when, I'm, when I sit and I watch that. Is it fair to say in the BMC you try to use jurors as quickly as possible? Absolutely. I, when I used to address the jurors, I used to tell them, we try to use you or lose you. Uh, again, we, we appreciate the fact that they're coming from, um, uh, you know, the busy days from school, work, the kids, whatever it is. And, and for them to take that kind of day off, or, I think it's incumbent on us to be able to reciprocate and, and be considerate. So the judges uh, in our department, and I'd say pretty much in every department um, in the judiciary, 
tries to address those jury cases as soon as possible because if there is no need for the jury, it is our belief that they should be released as soon as possible. And if it's going to be a trial, uh, to impound them as soon as possible so you can get about today's work. So you hope it's a positive experience and Absolutely. also an educational one as, as yes. well. And we try to make them as comfortable as we can while they're there as well. Do we need jurors if we have judges like yourself who are trained in the law? Uh, all our judges are trained on the law and we need jurors every day, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and uh, I had the good fortune of meeting you uh, in Dorchester Court a couple of years ago and you addressed the jurors and you said that jury duty is the epitome of the democratic system. Yes, it is. I, and, and I truly believe that because it's, um, I think the admirable thing about the jury system is that the decision makers are the community. It's not one person, um, it's not two people, but it, it's a community. And they're selected by the parties many times um, to make, to render that decision. And that's what democracy is, the community making decisions. And, and it's, I think that's why it works well. I think. Uh, why a lot of other systems and nations look to us because it is, uh, I think, an example of the democratic system at work. Now, Chief Justice Ron Keough, have you been selected for jury duty? I have been, well, I have been called to jury duty, have never sat in a trial yet. But you went. Yeah, oh, yes, I went. Did you get in the box? I didn't get in the box, no. I was uh, looking forward to it, though. <laughs> Uh, it, this would probably not uh, apply to your department, but are some cases, perhaps like in Superior Court, are they too complex for jurors? Uh, you know, I, some cases are very complex, but the, the jurors, from my experience, pay attention. They understand. Um, and we leave it, we hope and expect that the lawyers will be able to present the case uh, in such a way that the jury understands exactly what's at, uh, um, what it, what's at issue. So it, it, it's a matter of the lawyers um, doing their job in presenting the case to the jury. Um, but I, I think that the, the, there is no case that it's too difficult for a jury to understand, provided it's presented properly. Um, and I think that that's one of the great things in our system, that the jury will make that decision. Do you meet with jurors after, after a verdict? Time permitting, um, and if the jurors want, we, I meet with them afterwards. Again, uh, mainly to uh, ex maybe discuss their experience and see what we can do better, more than the merits. The merits, we do not talk about the case itself. The, the decision has been made uh, many times by the time the sentence has been rendered, and it's just a matter of, of talking about their experience to see how we can improve what we do. Have you ever been surprised by a jury verdict? I have. I have. But... You still went along. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. I mean, the, the jury, uh, the jury rules. You know, they they um, they listen, they they uh, make the decision, and that's um, that, that's it. That's what's going to be. Well, we've run out of time. We'd like to thank you uh, for joining us today on jury duty and make a difference on BNN. Just remember, if you have any questions regarding your jury service, you can always contact us online at majury.gov or call the Office of Jury Commissioner toll-free at 1-800-THE-JURY. That's 1-800-843-5879. Just remember, you do make a difference. Please serve when called. It's important to all of us. Thank you, Chief Justice. My pleasure. And thank you at home.